Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you now in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we love you and we praise your holy name. Thank you so much, Lord, for allowing us to praise and to worship you and for your wonderful presence, your Holy Spirit being here with us. Lord, I want to pray, Lord, for each person, each family, Lord, who came, came and gave their tithing and offering to you as an act of worship. I want to pray blessings upon them and their families. Lord, I want to pray for each person here today, Lord, they'll completely, Lord, die to their will. I pray that you open up, Lord, their spiritual ears and eyes. They can see and hear and understand, Lord, your word. I want to pray for myself, Lord, that I completely die to my will. And I pray, Lord, for an unlimited portion of your anointing power, your spirit to flow through me and upon me, to allow the word to flow here this morning. There's someone here that needs to be born again or healed or set free or delivered from anything, Lord. Let them accept you in the name of Jesus Christ, we do pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, this message today is going to be a little bit different. Most of you have heard most of these teachings in your life since you've been in this church. But what I'm doing this is a little bit different. Some's never heard it. Some's heard bits and pieces of it. And every year, we always in our church always teach the biblical feast days that's laid out in Scripture. I'm going to show it to you in just a minute. And that's coming up here very soon. We do that every year to honor God and to learn. But what I want to do this year is a little bit different. I want to slow it down, and I want to spend two weeks, this Sunday and next Sunday, on this one particular feast day. I want to do that each one. Why am I doing that? Because you might personally, church, here, have an understanding of what, what, I'm, what I'm talking about. You've heard it before, but are you able to relay it to somebody else? Are you able to teach it to somebody else? If questions come up, are you able to help someone else with it? So I want to slow it down for you. I want to help you understand this because it's so important. I think for anything, this here is the biggest thing that the church has missed over the years. Uh, truth or lie? Which one is it? Have you been lied to about the Bible? And then I've got the Feast of Trumpets Part 1. Next Sunday is going to be the fulfillment of the Feast of Trumpets, how Christ fulfilled it. But today is going to be all the things leading up to it that I don't ever have time to get into very deep. I have time to just kind of hit it with a, you know, just, just kind of just touch on it a little bit. Today I'm going to kind of bring it and slow it down a little bit to make sure you get a hold of all this. So what I want to do is first of all start off with the very first scripture. We're going to have it on the screen. We also have it next to you in the pew. And I want you to carry this stuff with you. Go to Galatians 6, 7. Galatians 6, 7. Listen to what this says. Be not deceived. Please underline that. Be not deceived. That's the most important thing. And the sad part is a whole lot of the church has been deceived. And this is, I'm going to show it to you in Scripture what I'm talking about. I promise you I've been a minister now for 23, 24 plus years and this is one of the biggest, biggest problems we have in churches today. Okay, So be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So now what I want to do is slow it down. If I sit here as a Christian, as a pastor, and I say to you, Hey, I'm getting ready to teach on the Feast of Trumpets. Rosh Hashanah, most people on the internet... And most people who says they're Christians would tune me out immediately and say what? Well, that's got nothing to do with me. That's a Jewish feast. Let's be real with it, right? Okay? And that's where you've been deceived. That's where you've been lied to. So I want to show you some reasons why I'm showing you this in Scripture. Because most people don't realize they have been lied to and deceived about this about what's fun. I want to fix it and show you here now. And you don't realize how important it is to know about these feast days. You don't understand that every story in the whole Bible, everything in the whole earth is wrapped around these feast days. And most folks don't even realize it because they've never. And guess who took them away from you? Satan himself. So I want to make sure you understand what's taking place here. So let's kind of look at this and see where you've been tricked. First of all, one thing that's been out here for years, and I know this is firsthand as a pastor because I used to be a part of it, is called replacement theology. How many of you ever heard of replacement theology? Replacement theology is in about 90% of the churches, especially across America, but I would say across the whole world, which is a lie from Satan. 
is that we church have replaced Israel because Israel rejected Jesus Christ. That's a lie from hell. That's not in Scripture nowhere at all. They don't say that in the Bible at all. Make sure you understand this very clearly. God has a purpose and a plan for Israel and for the new covenant church. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, you better understand to where every single human being that's part of the new covenant church in the New Testament all were Jewish people. Jesus Christ himself was a rabbi. And only Cornelius in the book of Acts outside of the uh, Jewish people was granted into the commonwealth of Israel. Hallelujah. So you got to understand that first thing you got to get in your mind is you've never replaced Israel and you never will. So it's very important that you get a hold of this. And you're going to see as we go through these features of what I'm saying this. Now, where did all this come from? Now, I have talked to Christians out here. I've also talked to Jews. Do you realize that the lie here has not only hurt the church, but it's also hurt Jewish people? Okay, let's look at this. Picture yourself as a Jewish person, okay? And you're growing up, and you're hearing that Jesus is not real. Jesus is your enemy. And why are you told these things? Because you growing up and your family, your great-grandfathers and great-great-grandmothers and fathers have been killed in something called the Crusades. Some of you have heard of the Crusades. It's, it's, it's the Crusaders. And they go out here and they kill Jewish people and tear everything up in the name of Jesus Christ, okay, with the cross. Would you not grow up hating the church and Jesus Christ too? Yes, you would. Here's a problem. The crusaders and, the, and that kind of stuff has nothing to do with Christianity whatsoever. That goes back to Catholicism and that goes back to Constantine. And I'm going to tell you right up front, they might be and probably are some Christians within the Catholic faith, but the Catholic faith is of the devil, period. Now, that might be sharp to say that, but I'm telling you the truth. I'm sick and tired of the lies. I'm sick and tired of seeing people go out here and live a fake life and live fake in, in Scripture. The Bible is not a Greek theology. The Bible is a Hebrew theology. you got to understand that when we replaced Israel and try to put in all this garbage of the Greek and take it out, which is what Constantine did, you now have embraced a false gospel and a false theology of the devil. And this is why the Jews has turned away from Jesus Christ and the church has on a little high horse up here thinking they have replaced Israel. It's getting quiet, but it's the truth. So I want to make sure before I teach on the Feast of, feast of Trumpets, you Christians need, need to know why you need to hear it. Because you, this has got nothing to do with being a Jewish feast. Are y'all getting a hold of this, anybody? They claim that they are the very first church. That's a lie. That's not in Scripture nowhere. Okay? The Catholic Church is not the mother church. The Catholic Church is not the first church. You, church, spiritually are the born-again believing bride. You are the church. Where the lie comes in, and I've told this many a times. I've even, even tried to write on this for, for, for years, and I never got finished with it yet. But Jesus Christ asked the question, to his disciples, and especially to Peter, who does men say that I am? And they say, some say you are a prophet, some say you are Elijah, some say you're a good man. He says, but who do you say that I am? And he says, you are the Christ. You are the Son of the living God. And what did Jesus Christ say? He said, you are a rock. He's referring to Peter as being the little rock, getting revelation. He said, but he, Christ, is the big rock. Y'all have heard of Petra, haven't you? And Petro, that's where it goes back to the words, okay? Petra is the big rock. The church was never built upon Peter, it's built upon Christ. He says, upon this rock I shall build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The gates of hell will prevail against the Catholic church because that's built upon a man. Hear me, guys. And I'm telling you right now, you said that's got nothing to do with me. If you are a Baptist or a Methodist or you're a Church of God or you're a Presbyterian, it has a whole lot to do with you. Because whether you realize it or not, the Catholic Church has influenced your belief inside your churches. You might, not, you, you might say, no, no, it don't, but yes, it does. I'm going to show it to you in just a minute. This is why I'm taking the time to go over this. Because church, you might not want to hear about the Feast of Trumpets, but it's in the Old and the New Testament 
And it's the next feast day to be fulfilled. And you believe me, you don't want to miss it. Y'all getting a hold of this, anybody? So the crusaders in the Catholic Church has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. Sorry. I'm not being mean. That's not the God of this Bible. It's nowhere in Scripture. So you got to understand how important this is, guys, that we um, follow what Christ says and God's Word says versus uh, what man says. I'll give you an example. In the Bible, the Bible says that the Sabbath day has never changed in Scripture. From the way God created it all the way until right now, God's timing and God's biblical way, the Bible says, it starts on Friday afternoon at 6 p.m., 6.01, and it goes all the way until Saturday afternoon till 6.01, and at 6.01, it changes over to the first day of the week. Okay, That's called the Sabbath day. But what does good old Constantine do of the Catholic Church? He comes in here because he hates Hebrew, he hates Jewish people, and he worships a sun god. So he changes it to the Sabbath, to Sunday. Hear me on this. Now you say, well, Greg, why are you here on Sunday preaching? Why do I do that? Not because this is the Sabbath day, because this is not the Sabbath day. The Bible says, do not forsake yourself of coming together on the first day of the week. So this is the first day of the week we come in to worship God. I'm not here because it's a Sabbath day. Because God's word has never changed. It's because Constantine changed it. But see, the Catholic Church says the Pope is the, is the mother church and they have a legal right to change God's word and to, and to take away from God's word and they have the final authority. That's blaspheming. You better hear me when the Pope takes the place of the Holy Ghost. That's very dangerous. Are y'all getting a hold of this, anybody? I'm just trying to show you biblical facts, things that you can go ahead yourself and Google. I'm trying to show you why, how the church has been duped. I'm going to show you why folks are not going to hear about the feast of trumpets because they haven't even heard of it before. And yet it's all in Scripture, but yet we're following religion of man versus what God says. Example, here's another one. Constantine come in here. Y'all have been teaching this many times. Constantine comes in here to get more pagans inside the church and takes a winter socialist sun god, that's what he worshipped, and he sat here and said, hey, Jesus Christ died on, I mean, was, was born on December 25th. Let's go worship the baby Jesus in the manger. That's not biblical nowhere. Guess when Jesus Christ was born? He was born on these fall feast days. In the fall, on one of the feast days that falls here at this time of the year. But what happens is, Tammuz, which is also in the Bible, which is that pagan character, he was born on December 25th. Are y'all getting a hold of this? And then the, the, the church, the fake church, Catholic church, replaced the story and put Jesus Christ there. So don't tell me that you've not been influenced by Catholicism because you have. Now, get a hold of this, anybody? I know it's quiet, but we care more about those kind of things than we do about the feast days. And I'm going to show you why we shouldn't do that here in a minute. So Jesus Christ was born during the fall, but not on December 25th. They also say that Jesus Christ died on, quote, Good Friday, and he resurrected on Sunday morning, Easter. That's also not in Scripture nowhere at all. How many here knows that was also put there by Constantine, the Catholics. All this was done to get your mind set upon Greek theology and replacement theology and take away the feast days, take away the Hebrew meanings, take away that Jesus Christ was a rabbi and put in a replacement theology that you have replaced these old evil Hebrew Jewish people and come up with your own doctrine. That's false gospel. That's false teaching. I'll get a hold of this, anybody. I can prove to you, I do it every year, that Jesus Christ died on Wednesday evening and three days and three nights to fulfill the scripture as John was in the, in the, in the wells belly for three days and three nights. Christ was inside the earth for three days and three nights. From Wednesday evening, he arose on Saturday evening going into the next day, which is 6.01, hallelujah. And that goes back to Passover. This is why it's important to understand. Okay, this is biblical. But yet, well, what do we do? We just push this away because that's a Jewish feast. That's not biblical. So I'm showing you right now why you should want to hear about the Feast of Trumpets. And I'll usually have time to go into it this depth every year. I just mention these things. 
But Christians who's listening and Christians who's watching now, you need to make sure they understand this. Very important. How many here also knows, I'm going to show it to you in just a minute, that he, the Catholic Church, and all these even changed our calendar. God has a biblical calendar, which I'll be showing to you in just a few minutes. And you have to go by our calendar now to live in this world in the United States. The one from January to December is called the Gregorian calendar. It goes back to Pope, Pope Gregory. You have to live by it because that's what we go by with all of our jobs and everything else. But that calendar has nothing to do with God whatsoever. But yet we just follow it. Are y'all getting a hold of this, anybody? They even pray to Mary. They pray to so-called dead saints. How many here knows, in everybody in this room, if you've been born again, the Bible says you are a saint. You've been sanctified, hallelujah, and justified through Jesus Christ. You don't have some authority of a pope or a man who has the right to classify if you are a saint or not by how much works you've done in the flesh. Are you going to hold this? And you definitely are not ever supposed to pray to Mary. Mary was a great woman, but the Bible says she is not the intimator between you and Almighty God. Only Jesus Christ is. Only go to Almighty Papa, Father, God, through Jesus Christ and nobody else. No dead saint can help you, and Mary sure can't help you. And I couldn't in this church tell you some of the teachings behind the scenes about what they say Mary does to calm down Papa God. There's no way I can even teach it in church. This is how sick it is. I'm trying to show you guys how sick Easter is. Go back and look it up, the origins of Easter. You'll see how sick it really is. I'm trying to show you these things that we have got ourselves into and we think if we say a Romans Road prayer, which don't really exist, and somehow we, we, we get to go to heaven and not change our lives at all. It's because I believe in Jesus Christ. All of a sudden now I get to go to heaven. If the change has not took place on the inside of here, you're not going to heaven. I don't care how religious you think you are. And my question to you is if you've got brothers and sisters and, and, and cousins and neighbors and friends out here that's in, quote, the Catholic type church, do you hate them? No. Some of them might even be saved. But here's my question. If you really are born again, how can you stay in an area of thinking and an area of religion that goes against Almighty God? And you, church, when are you going to say something to them? But they might hate me. I'd rather somebody hate me and get mad at me and go to heaven and then, then to go to hell. Hurting somebody's feelings or taking a chance they might like you no more. Y'all gonna hold this. That's what the Bible says. Do not let say, do not be deceived, as I showed you from the very, very beginning. Well, do not be deceived. It's blasphemy on what, 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 what this, what's going on here. How many of you ever heard of rosary beads? How many understand that repetitive rosary beads goes back to witchcraft and pagan worship even before the Catholic Church? They even took that pagan witchcraft garbage and put it inside a Catholic Church and do all the Hail Marys and Hail Marys and all this junk. Let me tell you something. You only have six times within a rosary bead which you haven't even mentioned Jesus Christ. The rest of the time is about Mary, 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 Mary. And you put roses out and the fragrances of the roses attracts Mary so you can pray to her so, she, so you can get to God. That's of the devil, guys. It's pure paganism. But that kind of garbage is what has affected even Protestant churches to push away the feast days, to push away the very thing that's in Scripture, that's all through Scripture from Genesis to Revelations. And yet very few Christians even know about it. Because you've been lied to saying that's Judaism and that's for the Jews, but yet it's not. And yet we adopt the very paganism that's in the Catholic Church who claims they are the church and they're not. So tell me which one is right. Are y'all getting a hold of this, anybody? It's quiet, I know. I'm just showing you this on purpose first. So I want to make sure that you understand this. They even teach that, that she was so immaculate that after Jesus Christ was born through her, she never had any more kids again because she was a virgin. That's a life in the pit of hell. The Bible even names his brothers and sisters. Yes, she had a husband, and yes, she was with him, and yes, she had more kids. So why lie to your church? Because they're trying to put her up on a pedestal and worship a woman. That goes back to pagan worship. Somebody get a hold of this, anybody? 
So, bottom line is, and that's just like, and I could go for hours on this one subject, but I got to stop here. So now I can go deeper into the starting of the Feast of Trumpets. So here's my point. I said all of that for one reason. So the Bible says you don't be deceived. So you do say, okay, wait a minute here. If all that's true, go look it up. So maybe I do need to understand what God is saying here in the New Testament and Old Testament. Because guys, do you not realize that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all the way through, what I'm fixing to teach you is all in the Bible about these feast days. Jesus Christ went to them, he fulfilled them, and all these things. But yet we don't know anything, anything, anything about them at all. That's sad. Now I'm telling you by next Sunday when you get a hold of the fulfillment of it, trust me, you're going to want to know. Because if you do not understand what I'm saying, you will not be raptured out of here. You better hear me on this. There are going to be two ways for people to get to heaven. You hear me on very, I'm going to say it bluntly. You're either going to be raptured out of here by Jesus Christ, or you're going to stay here and reject the mark of the beast and get your head lopped off. Both of those two groups will be part of the first resurrection. And there'll be a whole lot more who have their head lobbed off because they reject the mark of the beast. But yet they did not during this time right now actually worship Jesus Christ the way he says they brought in paganism and did it their own way with another gospel. But yet in their heart they still accept Jesus Christ. Does that make any sense? You better hear me on this. Well, you need to know what these meanings are. Are you looking for them or not? When is he going to come back? Do you even, you even know that? I do. Not the day or the hour, but I know the season according to God's word. So watch this right. Go, to, go over to Romans. I'm going to show you something here. And I've had this over the years. I've taught this many a times here. And folks are like, well, I don't agree with that. I'm sorry. You don't have to agree with it. It's not my word. It's God's word. Okay? This is why it's important to understand. There is no such thing as a Greek Christian. No such thing as a Catholic Christian. There's no such thing as a Baptist Christian. No such thing as a Methodist Christian. No such thing as a, as a Pentecostal Christian. That don't even exist. You're either a born-again believer or you're not. That's what God says. It's real simple. So let's carry this deeper. What is your belief system? What are you looking at? Look at Romans chapter 2 and look at verses 28 and 29. And this is going back here. He's talking to the Jewish people. Then he goes into talking about the, about the Gentiles. And look at verses 28. For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, neither is the circumcision, it deals with blood, which is outward in the flesh. Now watch. But he is a Jew. Stop right here. Everybody here in this building, if you have been born again and you put your faith in Jesus Christ, according to God's word, you are a spiritual Jew. And if you don't like it, then you're probably not born again. If you love the Greek Catholicism and that kind of stuff, or place of theology, there's something missing in your heart. Something's missing in your heart. Because look what it says here. But he is a Jew which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter. That means letter, letter of the law whose praise is not of men, but of God. Are y'all getting a hold of this, anybody? So, God has a plan for the Jewish people, and God has a plan for the Jews and the Gentiles who were put together to become one new man under a new covenant, hallelujah, because he took the Jewish people, because there was no, how many here knows there was no such thing as Hebrew or Jewish people? Y'all heard me teach this many times. No, everybody in this earth was pagans. Everybody. Every single person alive was pagans. Until God himself come down here and he chose and created Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Changed Jacob's name to what? Israel. To create a new people and a new nation. Not because they're so wonderful. Because God had to make a way for his son Christ to come back down to the earth and take on flesh of the covenant in the feast days that he created. And if he didn't do that, his son could not come. He didn't come as a Catholic. He didn't come as a Baptist. And I am not teaching guys Judaism. I don't teach Judaism. And the feast days is not Judaism. I love the law, but you can't live by it. I watched a video the other day of a lady who was a Jew. And I really felt sorry for her. She really meant well. She was going to other differences between 
um, the different types of, 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 of Judaism, like the Orthodox Jews and some who's not, some keeps the laws, part of the laws kind of thing. And in their mind, they're thinking that the more the laws and the rituals that I can keep. Now listen, they're doing this with not even understanding the feast days. They, 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 they take part of the feast days not even understanding what Christ did for them. And they think the more that they can keep these laws, the closer they get to God. Not realizing that Jesus Christ come here to do what? Fulfill the very law he created that man can't live up to. And once he fulfills it, he puts it inside your heart. That's why you're a spiritual Jew. Now get all this. To make you one new man. Jews and Gentiles come together as a spiritual Jew in Christ. Are y'all getting a hold of this anybody? That's why these feast days are that important. That's why we're getting ready to teach on the Feast of Trumpets. Because I promise you, you do want to know about it. I promise you. Are y'all ready to go deeper now? All right. Put up the Lord's Feast. Y'all have seen this many a times. Most of you have. You say, well, I already know that. That's good. I'm glad you do. But some folks don't know it. And your mom and daddy and your, and your cousin might not know it. And you need to make sure you understand what these are all about. Hallelujah. Because these feast days are so important. And I'm going to show it to you in Scripture in just one minute. But look at right here, these feast days. They are um, seven of them. And uh, I want you to get a hold of this. The very first three feast days are a season. That's in the springtime. Then you have one here in the middle called Pentecost, which is at the end of the first spring season. And then you have the fall feasts. Now understand the very first four have been fulfilled by Jesus Christ. He died on Passover. He was buried on unleavened bread. And he arose on Feast of First Fruits, not Easter. That's Tammuz. That's called reincarnation. It's not in Scripture. Nowhere. You say, well, it is, but Greg, it's in the book of Acts. No, if you have a King James Bible and you'll find it in the book of Acts, the word Easter is written one time from this translation. And if you look next to it, there's a little number or a letter. And when you look at it, guess what it's going to say? Passover, because that was put in there by man. has nothing to do with God. You'll see Jesus Christ come here to fulfill these very things so you could go to heaven and live with him forever. Hallelujah. That's what the Bible says. I dare anybody to show me differently. I've studied this thing for years and years and years, and I promise you, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all the way through the Old and New Testament, this is what you're going to find. Nothing about the Catholic Church, nothing about rosary beads, nothing about Mary, nothing about any of this garbage. But yet we adopt that kind of stuff and push away God's real, real truth. Y'all get a hold of this, anybody? That's why it's important. Now, the very first four, death, burial, resurrection has been fulfilled. 50 days later, he starts the church. Now, this is important that you get a hold of this. He starts the church. Now, after he starts the church, on the fourth feast day right here, Pentecost, there is something that you're in right now. You're at the end of it. How many of you have ever heard of summertime? Okay, summertime. That's called out of season. This is called the time of the Gentiles. On the God's biblical clock, this means where Gentiles are supposed to be born again, and they're supposed to be grafted into it. I'm going to show it in Scripture. Now watch. We're getting ready now to come out of that season and get ready to go back into it in season. Go to Genesis 1.14. Genesis 1.14. Let me show you something here. Genesis 1.14. And read this right here. Y'all have heard me say it many a times. It says, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven." to divide the day from the night and let them be for what? For signs and for seasons and for days and for years. Great, God made spring, summer, winter, or fall. That's not what it means at all. It sounds cute and wonderful, but that's not what it means at all. When you go to, the, to Genesis in the Hebrew and you look it up, the word seasons and signs means moadi. Moadi. What does Moadi mean? Y'all heard me teach on this every year. Is it a fixed, appointed time or season? It's a festival, assembly for a definite purpose, which is the feast days. Y'all getting a hold of this? 
So when God says, I have created the signs and the seasons in Genesis, he is saying, I have created a festival appointed time, which is what's getting ready to hit on the calendar here soon in September, coming up in about, in about, a, about a week or so now. I'm fixing to show it to you. That's God's appointed time. God says it's for a purpose. And God sets these things out in our scriptures for a reason. And we have been lied to and deceived and pushed away from the very thing that God puts for us to have. But yet we adopt paganism. Let's, let's go deeper. Go over to Le, Leviticus 23. Let me show it to you in scripture. Because I don't want anybody to think this is what I'm making up. Okay? Now watch y'all for me say every year. And I know you've heard this before. That's okay. It's for you to teach somebody else. Look at Leviticus 23, look at verses 1 and 2. And it says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them concerning the feast of who? The feast of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. Look at verses 4. These are the feasts of the Lord and holy convocations which you shall what? Proclaim in their seasons, their appointed times which is getting ready to come up. Now, what does he say? He don't say this is Judaism. He doesn't say this is Jewish feasts. He said these are the feasts of the Lord. These are holy convocations. He said these are my feasts. He even says that they're holy and even if you keep reading it, it says and they're, and they're going to be forever. Most folks don't even realize when you hit the thousand year millennium, the Bible even talks about these feast days and everybody on the earth in the thousand year millennium will be celebrating these feast days whether you want to or not. But yet I've never been told that. I wonder why. Satan knows exactly how to come in here and bring in religion and all those kind of garbage and bring in Catholicism and call them the church. Hear me. It's wrong. And yet what I'm showing you here is all through Scripture. Prove me wrong, somebody. Prove me wrong. You can't. It's not got nothing to do with cockiness or what I'm saying. God's Word says what it says. Nowhere, I just I read to you, does it show this is Judaism or our Jewish feast. It's the Lord's feast. If you say you're born again, He's supposed to be your Lord. And if they say His feast and the Holy Convocations, shouldn't you find out what they mean? Anybody? So now we're saying that, that's the opening of this message. <laughs> we are now going to get started into just the beginning of the Feast of Trumpets. Next week I'll get into the actual fulfillment of it, but let's kind of get into this. If you go over to Leviticus 23 and look at verses 23 through 25, this is where it listed in the season here. It says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of of Israel, saying, in the seventh month, or not the word seventh month, in the first day of the month shall you have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing trumpets, a holy convocation. You shall do no severe work therein. You shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. The last song you just got finished singing was talking about, and the trumpet will sound, and the Lord's going to come. You've heard that your whole life about hearing a trumpet sound and have no idea that's part of God's plan, that's part of God's feast days. You have no idea what he's talking about. I grew up the same way. You just hear all these, all these little tales and stories and have no idea. But here's where it's at. That's why this is important to grab a hold of what it's talking about. Now, put up the calendar. Now, did somebody get it wrong? Did somebody sit here and get this wrong because here's what's going to take place. Coming up here in uh, September 18th and 19th on our calendar is going to be um, a civil new year that's coming up. Now how in the world could this be a civil new year when the Bible says on the seventh month, on the first day of that month, Okay, so who's got it wrong? Who's got it right? Well, look at your notes and look at your calendars here, and this will show you what I'm talking about. In the middle would be the fake calendar that we have from January all the way to December. I've put that there so you can understand where we fall on it in Scripture. Okay, it says on the seventh month, if you'll look at it, what does it say? Tishariah. 
Tisharia, and you see it's always going to fall on our calendar from September to October every year. September, October. But on God's biblical calendar, it's called Tisharia. And it's important to understand because this feast here, when it hits September the 18th and 19th, and I'm saying that because it falls on the evening and goes to the next, to the next it's going to last for 10 days. And I'm going to show you what it's talking about here in just a minute. Now, it's important because that's going to fall right into another feast that's going to be very important. Now, get a hold of what this is talking about. Put up the feast days again, if you don't mind. See the difference here, okay? If you look at the very first part of these feast days, the first three feasts are called spring feasts. That, the Bible says, is a spiritual new year. A spiritual new year, okay? Then in the middle right here, the Feast of Pentecost is at the end of that spiritual new year. And then you have a long time of summer in the middle. And then you go right here, getting ready to come up in September, you got another three feasts that has not been fulfilled yet. That's called the civil new year. So God actually has two new years. One is spiritual and one is civil. You say, well, what's that got to do with me? Everything. You have the exact same thing happening to you right now. What do you mean, Greg? Everybody here that has been born again believer, raise your hands. Okay? Now you might not know or remember the exact day you got born again. I don't know if you have it written down somewhere or not. But when you got born again, that represents your spiritual new year. When you was born at the hospital and you have a date attached to it, that's your civil new year. One is for the natural and one is for the spiritual. Does that make any sense? This is how God sees it and does it on his biblical calendar. Spiritual new year, civil new year. Okay? And you, as we every year teach in Passover, you'll see why. Because that affects your spiritual. That's how we get born again. And then if you accept Christ, then he starts the church at Pentecost. And what you do from here will change your outcome in your civil new year. That's why it's important to understand what this means. Okay? Because I promise you, God's word is real and it's not fake. And how many here understands that God knows what he's doing? Amen? Now, here's what you don't realize. In the month of Tishrea, as I was showing you earlier, and on this feast day, let me give you some examples of things that happen in or around this feast day. How many here know that Jews understand this? They celebrate the birthday of the earth. How many here know this is when God created the heavens and the earth? That's when he created Adam and Eve, right here during these feast days. During these three feast days in, in, the, in the month of the fall is when he created heaven and earth. He created um, Adam and Eve. Also, this is on the exact day is when the flood waters dried up after the flood. Enoch also was taken by God on these feast days. More on that next week because that's where the fulfillment comes from. Sarah, Rachel, Samuel also conceived on this very feast day. Joseph was freed from prison by Pharaoh on this feast day. Uh, the forced labor of the Hebrews in Egypt ended on this feast day. Job contracted leprosy on this feast day. And the start of sacrifices of the altar built by Ezra was also in Tisharia or, around, or on this feast day as well. So now go over to Psalms 98. What most folks don't realize is God has a whole entire psalm dedicated, actually more than this, uh, but I'm going to show you just a few of them here, to just this feast day. So let me ask you a question. If you don't believe in God's feast days, and you don't believe in the Hebrew teaching, Hebrew roots, and you're following after paganism and say, well, I'm not a Catholic, but, and you say, I'm a Pentecostal. No such thing as that. No such thing in Scripture as, as being a Pentecostal Christian. None whatsoever. Well, it says in the book of Acts. No, it don't. See, what you don't realize is Pentecost did not start in the book of Acts. Pentecost started thousands of years before that. And on the feast of Pentecost is when the Holy Ghost came down in the Old Testament and the power of God hit that mountain, hallelujah, and gave the Ten Commandments and gave the law to the Jewish people and 3,000 people died because they disobeyed God. 
But when Christ come here and fulfilled these very feast days, then you pick it up in the book of Acts, and now here it is again, they're coming right around every year and celebrating the same feast day. Now that Christ fulfilled it, now the Holy Ghost falls again on that very same feast day. Hallelujah. And this time, the law has been fulfilled that he gave, and he gives himself. He gives the Holy Ghost to the church and starts it and 3,000 people got born again. Y'all going to hold this anybody? So you're no such thing as a, a quote Pentecostal Christian. You're either a born again believer or you're not. You're either going to follow what Jesus Christ has to say in his word or you won't. Now if you don't, guess what? You still get to go to heaven. You will if you've been truly born again. But you will not fulfill your duty upon this earth. But I've had a lot, a lot of folks, I'm glad. There's, there's a lot of folks out here in the world right now who's not saved, who does, quote, good works all the time. They go out here and feed the hungry, and feed the poor, and do good, trying to make themselves feel so good about what they do. That will not get you to heaven. It won't, I, all that's wonderful stuff. But pagans can do that, guys. Atheists can do that. As a good person, what they call good can do that. A storm comes, a hurricane hits, everybody helps each other. That don't make you holy. What makes you holy is Jesus Christ, hallelujah. Are y'all getting a hold of this, anybody? So look at Psalms 98 and look at verses 4 and 6. Here's what part of this feast day is all about. It's about the glory, God's royalty, knowing who he is, hallelujah. Look what it says. It says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, or excuse me, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All the earth make a loud noise and rejoice and sing praise. Sing unto the Lord with the harp and the harp and the voice of a psalm with trumpets and sound of a cornet. Make a joyful noise before the Lord, the king. Oh, but my God, if you got uh, instruments inside the church, you're going to go to hell. That's how some folks act. Some folks think you can't have a guitar in the church or a horn in the church. Are y'all going to hold this? What you're really saying is, I can't have interest inside the building because the building is not the church. The people are the church. Make a joyful noise, hallelujah, because one day, I promise you, God's going to make a noise with the sound of a trumpet. And when that blast happens, hallelujah, the church is going to be doing something. And then something's going to change over on the earth. Anybody going to hold this? Now, here's another big one. I told you guys, if you remember, a couple of weeks ago, to start examining yourself. Remember that? I told you that you've got about 30 days coming up. Because here's what happens. From September the 18th and 19th on our calendar, Tisharia, okay, on their calendar, when this feast of trumpet hits, They've got 10 days left. Prior to that, they've been blowing the show for the trumpet for 30 days, saying, get ready, get ready, get ready. Why? Because this particular feast day is about judgment as well. And you're supposed to examine yourself. Look at yourself. Fast, pray. Really look at what God's doing in your life. And when it hits that feast day, you've got 10 days left. Now, According to their teaching, God opens up certain books and your name is either going to be written in the book of life or it's going to be written in what they call an inter intermediate book. Not sure if you're, going to be, if you're sure you're right with God or not or they say your name's written in, 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 in the book of death and you're not going to go to heaven. So that's what they say. But the Bible talks about also the books, the book of life. God also talks about other books that he's going to open up in the judgment so my question to you, church, is how do you get to heaven? How in the world are you going to do what God wants you to do if you're following paganism? If you're not, if you're not understanding what God's been talking about here, how are you going to make it there? It's what people don't realize. So understand this. From 10 days after, the, after it starts, September the 18th and 19th, it's going to go until the Day of Atonement. I'm going to be teaching on that coming up as well. Now you can read later Hosea 14 verses 1 through 9, and that will help you understand what I'm talking about. Also, Psalms 81, verses 1 through 16, is going to be a whole entire Psalms dealing with the Feast of Trumpets. So I'm going to kind of slow it down here and make sure you understand it before I go on. Next Sunday, I will get into the fulfillment 
of this. Why is that important? Because I promise you, on or around this season is when it's going to happen. Now, y'all have heard me tell you this before. I'm going to to close again with this right here, okay? Is he going to come back as a thief in the night? Y'all have heard that saying before. I'm going to get into it more next week, okay? He does not come back as a thief in the night to anyone who's a born-again believer who understands the seasons because you're looking for him. We know according to God's word, Passover, when he died and when he was buried and when he arose, hallelujah, has been fulfilled. And I'm talking about guys fulfilled exactly on the exact second, the exact minute, the exact hour in scripture on those feast days when he did it. Okay? Exact day. Exact day when the feast of Pentecost hit and had fully come, the Holy Ghost fell and starts the church. Now, those first four feast days have been fulfilled exactly on God's calendar. Do you not think that God's also going to fulfill the next meaning of feast of trumpets around the same time? According to God, there's no way he can take his church up out of here in January or February or March or April or May or June or July or August. Okay, it has to be September, October to fulfill his scripture according to God's word or it makes him a liar. So he's not coming back to me as a thief in the night. He said, well, you don't know when he's going to come. I don't know the day or the hour and you're not supposed to know, but I do know the season, okay? So the Bible, because the season Moa D says, it's a festival, it's a appointed time from Almighty God. Y'all get a hold of this? So he might come back this year. He might not. It might be next year or the next year, or the next year. But here's what I can tell you before I get into this next week. If you don't come back, what are you supposed to expect? Okay? I'm supposed to be looking as a bride for him to come. Come on, Lord, come quickly. I love you. I don't love this world. I'm here for you. Now watch. If you don't come back during this season, though, I'm examining myself. I'm looking at myself. Am I right where I'm supposed to be with you, God? And according to your word, God, you want to bless me. So here's, here's the key. If you don't come back and take me home, great, that's fine. I'm still here, but bless me so I can be a blessing for one more year to the next feast season to see if you're going to come back or not. So God wants to bless you beyond measure, and how you get blessed is what you do from your spiritual new year all the way until now, and God determines how your year is going to be. How many here knows God wants to bless you? Seriously, He wants to bless you. But I can promise you this. You're out here living like hell, living like you want to, doing what you want to do, ignoring God, bringing in paganism, never reading, never praying. You might be saved, but you will not be blessed. You might get things on your own in your flesh, but you won't be blessed. You can try to cover it up with your flesh all you want to, you won't be blessed. Blessing is when you get the physical things and the spiritual things and you've got peace or passes all understanding, hallelujah. I can live in the good or the bad and I've got peace, hallelujah. I can die tomorrow, die tonight, or live forever. It doesn't really matter. I've got peace in Jesus Christ. I know who I am. I know who saved me. I know where I'm going to go when I die, hallelujah. You understand that? I've got something to live for and something to die for. And if you don't believe God's word, don't call yourself a Christian. Stop it. You get so tired of these fake Christians out here in the world. If you believe God's word, you stand on it, hallelujah. Stand on it, believe it or not. This is what's happening in the world today, guys. But I promise you this, the next feast day coming up represents the rapture of the church. There's no such thing as rapture. I'm going to get into it more next week. Okay? You are right. The word rapture is not in Scripture. But the feast day is, which means a violent, quick, sudden snatching out of here. Boom. That's going to happen. It will happen. I can guarantee it will happen. And all the naysayers say it's not going to happen when you look around and very few are gone, but somebody you know is going to be gone. And I say very few because that's exactly what's going to happen. Very few is going to be gone. There's going to be a whole lot more who's left here, who says are saved, but yet live, they're not, they're not going to take the mark of the beast and they will get right with God and get saved with their head lobbed off. 
Because I promise you right now, if you're not being persecuted, church, you're doing something wrong. If the world loves you, you're doing something wrong. If you agree with the world, you definitely doing something wrong. But hear me, pastors, if you're not teaching what God's word says, you definitely are doing something wrong. And most pastors wouldn't dare touch what I'm showing you right now. They wouldn't teach these feast days. And most of them know them because they're afraid their congregation might get them to leave. Honey, I've been, I've been brought to court over this stuff. I have been sued, cussed out, call everything in a book. I'm, I'm sitting in court with five lawyers looking me in the face saying, why did you change that church to a Judaism church? I said, really, have you lost your mind? Why are you teaching all this stuff? I have no idea what I'm talking about. And I had to try, to try to teach them there how we don't follow Judaism. What we're following scripturally is what the Bible says is the fulfillment of these very feast days all the way through scripture of what Christ came here to do. But we're so brainwashed into following after man's ways in religion. It's like Easter time. Y'all know, y'all know it's real. What I'm talking about. You're, good, you're going to go to church and celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ and then leave the next day or the same day and go hunt for eggs. I used to do it because I didn't know any better. We all been there. But once I found out truth, I couldn't do it no more. But I'm just trying to show you what the Bible says. But, but yet, folks are, are scared to do what I asked them to do. You're scared to go Google the origins of Easter. You're scared to go Google these things about all these pagan holidays because you might have to give up something. You want God just to agree. You want God just to mix light and darkness together. It's okay. No, that's not how God works. Are you going to go to hell for it? No. But you're going to be in God's will? No, you will not. See, you're wanting God to bless you, but you don't want to give up the world system. That's what he warned Israel about. The exact same thing happened to Israel. You want, you want, you want to have your cake and eat it too. I've got news for you guys. This ain't yin and yang. They're saying light and darkness mixes together. That's not how it works. That's of the devil. But hear me on this, guys. And God's watching. And God knows your heart. God knows your heart. He knows my heart. What are you willing to give up for God's will to be done in your life? What are you willing to stand up for? And here's my question to you, friends, family around you. If you, The more you understand what I'm showing you here and by next week, the more you can teach it to somebody else. Is it going to be easy? No. They're going to think you've lost your mind. That's okay. Seriously. But God loves you. Okay? Can we all stand to our feet? I hope you got something out of this today. I hope it means something to you today. Next week, it's going to, I promise you, we're going to get us a very, very deep teaching. Some of you've heard and some of you've never heard before. I'm going to go, I'm going to go that deep as well next week. Okay, I want you to understand, though, it's so important for you to know the meanings of these feast days so you're not caught off guard. Hallelujah. Amen? Because God knows that God wants you to have them. The Spirit's trying to show it to you. If you'll, if you'll give it to Him. So if you're here today and you're not born again, I always want to give you the opportunity to get born again. I'm not going to do what most preachers do, which is fake, make you close your eyes and try to talk to you about the Bible and try to raise your hand and all that kind of stuff. That's not how you get saved. Born again is real simple. The Word of God's being preached. It's out here. Jesus Christ died for you on the cross. He's resurrected for you, hallelujah. The Spirit of God is here. And if the Spirit comes into your soul now and you're not saved and, and convicts you and shows you you're not saved, you must repent of your sins and then at that point you accept what He did for you, you get born again. It's that simple. It's that simple. It's not about religion. It's not about joining the church. You're part of the church when you get born again. Hallelujah. That's what it's talking about the Bible says. Now once you know for a fact you've been saved, this next part church is for you. What's the Holy Spirit telling you to say or do? To come pray for a loved one? To come give a testimony? I don't know. What's your need today? There's nothing too big for God. I can't heal you, but I've seen a lot of folks healed. Not because of me, because of God's Word. I've seen things happen I can't explain, except God, God did it. Amen? I've seen God do all kinds of things, but no man can do anything. Does that make any sense? So what's your need today? There's nothing too big for God. Nothing too big for God. 
I'm going to stop right here. I hope you got something out of that today. Again, I spent more time on purpose showing you why you should listen to this teaching instead of turning it off. And we just kind of get open up the doors a little bit about this. Next week, I promise you, we're going to go deep into the actual Feast of Trumpets. And it's going to be most just talking about the fulfillment of what Christ did. And I'm going to show you all through Scripture what it's talking about. Not my opinion. Amen? So please try to bring someone back with you. Also, when this gets put on the Internet, it might be, it might be tonight or tomorrow, take it and, and, and put it out there and give it to somebody who needs to hear it. Amen? If you do that, I promise you, you're going to be helping them, not, not hurting them. Amen? Uh, Steve, you mind closing in prayer?